happy, happy July. We're back. <laughs> Did you hear my voice crack? That was so bad. We're back. <laughs> we, we come back with confidence. Wow. We're back. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Homemaker Chic Podcast. You are looking at Shay Elliott and Angela Reed. We are the co-hosts of Am- Homemaker Chic Podcast. And I say that because the show has gone to video. So for everybody that's watching for the first time, welcome to the show. Don't worry, yes. we're still on your favorite podcast players, but this is kind of a big deal. And if we seem nervous, it's because, because we are. Sweating right now, guys. How I'm really you? sweating. Sweating. Well, I'm sweating for starters. Um, but <laughs> I, yeah, you know, I was just thinking about this when this podcast started and we were recording in my basement and I could just sit and eat cheese while you were talking. <laughs> Gone are the days. And, and she did. I did eat oh cheese. Oh my gosh. Of course I did. Yeah, I recorded on the front porch and we started in winter. So I was like in a skull cap and three sweatshirts and yeah, that was great. And now I have to make sure there's no lipstick on my teeth. So here's the thing for many years, our beautiful Patreon patrons have been supporting us over on Patreon and we were treating them to video episodes of the show and a quarterly fangirl call to reach more homemakers And because we know you want video, we're going to video on Spotify and YouTube. We're still going to do our fangirl calls. We still love our patrons. So those perks are still the same. So you'll get to hop on once a quarter and just really hang out with us, help us plan the next season. So that's lots of fun. So we thank you. We love our patrons, but we're really excited to be able uh, to bring video to the Dare I say the the masses? Oh my gosh. Is that a little assumptive? <laughs> it's a little assumptive. And also there's just so much noise out there. So here we are adding more to it. More to the Do noise. I think it's still important. Stu always reminds me like just because there's a lot of voices doesn't mean that your voice isn't important, which I really appreciate. Right. And um, right. you know, it's still a relevant conversation. It's yeah. A very relevant conversation. And and I really enjoy being able to not only like listen to podcasts while I'm preparing dinner, but also being able to to watch them and to engage with their mm-hmm. faces, that human element of it. And a lot of times people have been listening to our voices for years and they don't actually know what we look like and our mannerisms. And it kind of adds this intimacy <laughs> level, both for the viewer and for the person recording, I think. So mm-hmm. it'll be fun to oh, see how it goes. Mannerisms. Scary. Sorry. <laughs> and it's going to take us a little bit. You know, I'm Cringy. like in yellow it's... land here. We got a lot of yellow going on. Angela's blue, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what are you painting? Are you painting that wall? What's happening? Angela, come on. I'm I'm always doing something. You know, yes, I'm painting my office. So this is okay. the season of summer. And this is a season mm. when we're not schooling. So when I have some home projects that need to be taken care of, this is my time because I can't stop mm. midweek during the school year and just say, I'd now like right. to spend three days painting my office. That's just not right. the stage of schooling that we're at. And so we built some shelves, just cheapo Lowe's brackets and plywood ripped down to 12 inches and sprayed the whole mm-hmm. thing to match the wall. So it sort of looks like a built in. And we've just spent all blend. this time just organizing <laughs> things and labeling things. But yes, I had to take my artwork down off my wall in order to paint it. So Ooh, your artwork's going to look so good against that yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. But things take time. Things take time. They do. Summer is a great time for projects. Summer is a great time for wine. This episode. <laughs> Not this a hard segue. This premiere episode. <laughs> it was rough, man. <laughs> this premiere episode of season 21, if you've been with us since, since day one, we love you. We can't believe it's season 21. But this is brought to you by Dry Farm Wines. You can visit dryfarmwines.com forward slash homemaker chic. If you're brand new to this concept of biodynamic, organic wine brought to you from small family farms all across the world, uh, you're in luck because with your first order, whether it's a, if it's a subscription order or a one-time purchase, you're going to get an extra bottle for a penny. Shay, why don't you tell them yes. why we drink Let's talk dry farm. about Why this. dry farm? Let's talk about this because it is summertime and people are kicking back and they're enjoying a nice chilled white while they're poolside. And these are all wonderful things. But we always talk about on the podcast, better, not more. And Dry Farms is really unique in multiple ways. For one, and 
only 5%, this kind of shocked me, only 5% of the wines in the world are organic. And of that 5%, the percentage that falls into the categories that Dry Farms has set for quality is significantly mm-hmm. lower. So when we say this is the cream of the crop, we're not saying these are the most expensive bottles you can buy. But what right. we are saying is in terms of quality, they are absolutely top notch. What surprises mm-hmm. me is how actually inexpensive Dry Farms is able to do this. Because if you go to your standard grocery store, it's very common for people to spend $20, $25 on a bottle of wine. And I haven't mm-hmm. punched exactly what Dry Farms is, but I think it's $28 a bottle. So we're talking well, about- and the f- shipping is in there. So true. You know, it's, yeah, it's great. A far superior product. So they are absolutely committed to wine purity. So in order to meet their standards for dry farms to import it and ship it to you, it has to be sugar-free. It has to be farmed organically. It has to have a lower alcohol content, one that's reflective of a natural grape without added sugar to get that alcohol content up. They need to follow European heritage practices, have low sulfites, be grown on small family farms, low carb, keto, paleo, dry farmed, no irrigation, vegan, meaning no animal products at all, great for people with allergies, are used in the processing of it, and curated for for good taste. (laughs) So they've actually done all this work for you. And, you know, their motto is grown, not made. And I think that's such, that captures so much, isn't it, of of what we Mm -hmm. represent here on the podcast. So dryfarmwines.com forward slash homemaker chic. If you haven't tried, this is your side. This is your call. Go do this now. Go get a bottle of three or a pack of three. Get your extra bottle. Right. Give it a try. Just give it a try. It's a great idea. Mm-hmm. A great idea. Link well, below um, in the show notes I'm, if you'd like. Link below. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And if you're watching on YouTube, everything will be in the video description. We're going to have to get used to saying that. <laughs> so, That's true. Um, Can I be I honest? I'm a little so scared f- to go on YouTube. If I'm going to be honest, yeah, I'm a little, I'm it feels feeling a little, a little like, afraid. like I'm sitting here naked. recording. I the show. think feels, I want I to why. just cancel <laughs> comments. Like you can watch, please don't comment. Please don't. Please keep your thoughts well, to yourself. Uh, can we do that? <laughs> it's exciting. It's going to give a, it's going to give, um, like you said, a visual to, uh, the people that already enjoy the show. Um, but you know, homemaking is a controversial topic. So Maybe I don't want to hear it. Maybe we will turn the comments off. I think we a hundred percent should do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> off the air conversation. <laughs> right. Right. Um, fireworks are done. Yep. We had a fun fourth. We mm-hmm. um, we did a lot a lot of fireworks in the yard. Super fun. Mm-hmm. Joel was like super dad. He decided we had uh, my mom up. And we went to the beach. It was cloudy, but it was really like just a beautiful overcast, nice and warm, ate a lot of good food. And then towards the end of the day, daddy said, let's go buy fireworks. And that's kind of a hike to go all the way south and buy fireworks. So they did. And they did fireworks till like 1130, 1030 mm-hmm. in the yard. Wow. Just squealing and giggling. And mm. you know, I could see the flashes coming through the window and lots of fun. Whew, fireworks are. Did you guys. Those are like hate speech here where I live because they're illegal now in our county. And we woke up and the Mm -hmm. sky was filled with smoke and hundreds of acres of hillside was on fire. (laughs) So they've actually arrested the person already who caused it. Rule breakers. Yeah. I mean, I I, I know it's such a bummer because you don't want. Yeah. I, for one, don't want the government telling me what to do. But at the same time, like you also don't want your house year, burning down. <laughs> houses burn yeah. down. It's a real problem yeah. here. So we had fun. We I don't like- think anything would burn here. <laughs> We're just one big soggy sponge. That's all it does is rain. I uh, published a, a YouTube video on the Parisian Farm Girl channel on Friday and had like a corresponding newsletter blog post. And that's my that was my lamentations. Those were my lamentations. Uh, just what it's doing to the garden and just the constant rain. I've never experienced anything like what we're going through in my whole life. Mm. As far as the amount of rain, it's quite depressing. So mm-hmm. it's funny too, how the weather would catch on fire here. The weather affects the homemaker. 
Mm-hmm. We had a overcast yeah. day last week and I was like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> like I want to like clean. Yeah. I cleaned and mm-hmm. organized and made food. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's I hyper think impacted by the weather. Yeah. I, and in, in the summer, I think when it, when it is overcast or misty or there's a thunderstorm rolling in, it's like a permission slip Fun. to get stuff done inside. Yeah. And yes. you're off the hook for the garden. You're off the hook for taking kids out and helping them, you know, doing something with them. Yep. Off the hook for any, you can just kind of get cozy and yeah. yeah. Do the, those things. Okay. So like I've got, mm-hmm. I sat down the other night. I have many, many moments, many momentary breakdowns. I don't know if any other homemakers <laughs> raise your hands um, where you just get overwhelmed. Don't you, you know, even when you're not, mm-hmm. When school's not involved in the same way as it is during the school year, for those of us with children, there are times when things just get a little wadi in your head and it just, they spiral and they're circular and you're not quite sure how to break the pattern. You're not quite sure even necessarily like what to move forward with, what would be the best use Mm -hmm. of your time? How do you set priorities? And the other night I sat down, my family went to a Psalm sing. I stayed home and I just made myself an entire list on my notes on my phone. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I just sat down with the little bubbles that you can check off. That's right. Yes, ma'am. So easy. (laughs) Yeah, girl. Notes is my favorite Mm -hmm. feature on Apple products. So I, I actually sat down with my laptop because they, it goes between, right? So if you type it on your computer, you can get it on your phone. So I'm just like typing this out kitchen. I need to clean the root cellar. I need to order this replacement piece. I need to da, 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 da and patch this thing that the dog broke and da, da. and I just went through all the things just absolutely brain dumped everything mm-hmm. I could think of you know how many things I've marked off that list zero None. but I've also thought yeah, about it you got it out though <laughs> you're not ruminating out. on it that's what you did you birthed it baby <laughs> I did I totally now you get to raise the child it. eventually but at least you birthed it Yes, that's exactly yeah. what it was. And, you know, this is a continual um, struggle, I feel like, for homemakers is to know where do I apply my energy? Where is my energy the most effective? Where is it most needed right now? So I was cleaning the mm-hmm. kitchen the other day. Teenager, in and out, in and out, in and out. Finally, I just grabbed her and I wrapped my arms around her and I was like, what's up, girl? <laughs> what's going on? Like, what's what's on your heart right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just sort of in that moment had to pivot between like, this is not the most important use of your time right now. There is something that your girl wants to talk to you about or wants to share with you or wants to chit chat about, even if it's nothing crazy important, you know? And that's like, to me, like something the homemaker kind of has to be doing all the times. What is most important? Well, I think because you can, um, you can plan your list, you can plan your week, but getting up and sort of when you wake up in the morning, you know, whether it is a change in the weather or a change in a child's needs or something like that, like having a fluidity about it, not being so rigid, kind of saying, what does, what does the day need for me? Not what do I need to get out of the day? Mm -hmm. Because usually the, the sort of mental approach of what do I need to get out of the day is like, um, Oh, crud. I just forgot I was going to say, and it was really good. (laughs) Sure it was. No, that's exactly right, though. It was really good. (laughs) You know, it's, 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 you, you can't, you're expecting, your expectations are too high. You know, you're, you can be setting yourself up for, for disappointment because the day is probably not going to go the way you expected it to in some way, shape or form, Mm -hmm. you know? So, Mm -hmm. oh, that was not my point. But someday it'll come to me and it'll come. It'll we'll come in a few a whole minutes. Another show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it'll come in a few minutes. Um, I think that is part of our part of our greatest work in our homes is, you know, we talk about this all the time here on Homemaker Chic, this idea of just curating your home. It gets to be your flavor of home. Isn't that an exciting thing? Like, did you it is, know I when think you it's got like married? Undervalued. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when I first started. Yeah. Did you know what uh, the flavor of your home would be at that point? Or was it like this no, process? No. It was a process. I think probably the first time that sort of entered my mental space was 
when I was going to have my first child Mm because you've been watching the way people are doing things and you're like, okay, I like that. I don't like that. I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm going to put my spin on it, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. you know? But no, I didn't think about that with homemaking. But I think it's the the idea is undervalued because it really is so special. It's your home. Mm -hmm. It's your vibe. It's, It's the like aroma. It's the aura. It's you get to create that. Mm-hmm. and it's going to be different for everyone. And some people's creating is going to be like very, very different than others. So, yeah. Yeah. So what's, what do you think like the flavor of your home is this summer? Do you got a new vibe going on? No, girl, I'm just surviving. I'm still <laughs> surviving. <laughs> I, my birthday is in a couple of weeks and I've been yep. told it will be done by my birthday. So uh, if you're piece? the kitchen, yeah, if ah, you're brand new, okay. uh, Angela and family have been remodeling their kitchen since January. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, I think I'm really, uh, without sounding like a drama queen, okay, I know people are going through legit struggles. So I mean no disrespect to true strife and struggle, Okay. But I think I have to come to terms with how stressful this has been. Mm -hmm. This has been really, really challenging as a cook. Mm -hmm. It's been really challenging as someone who likes to keep a clean house. Uh, You know, the kitchen is ground zero. And to not like if you're I'm geared up a certain way, I like to do the whole, you know, whatever as as shut it down at the end of the day with a candle. Everything's in its place. Mm-hmm. Things are clean. It's a real source of content me- contentment for me. A kitchen is cozy and the heart of the home and to have it be so in flux and like working, but not working. So by that, I mean, it's like, where does, we don't have any drawers. There's no cabinets. There's just dishes stacked and silverware thrown in a basket and it's very, I'm, it's a constant struggle. It's been a constant struggle to keep it somewhat cohesive and organized and sense, making sense. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's been really challenging, even just with like keeping spirits up for meal creation. I'm just like, forget it. You know, like, <laughs> uh, so this there's is some a hard cereal. time of year for that. This it's, is it's, for everybody. It is. So, uh-huh. yeah, it's, so I, so the vibe right now, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, mm-hmm. I think the sink's getting installed, which is just going to be, it's going to be so beautiful. And like, who am I to complain? I'm mm-hmm. finally getting this, not, you know, this dream kitchen. It is a dream kitchen. It will be a dream kitchen when it's done, but that doesn't take away from seven months of drywall dust where you eat. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, it's true. No, I actually kind of had forgotten that you were doing that because you've stopped talking about it as much. But you well, must, I like, mean, come probably on. you're just stop stop <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Who wants to hear about it all the time? It's not interesting. These, oh my all. gosh. These things take, you know, uh, this is our motto. It takes twice as long, costs twice as much, and looks half as good. It's usually how projects go. And if you actually go into that with an expectation, <laughs> you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah great that's really sorry <laughs> so sorry the whole point is that it looks great when i'm done <laughs> like dang it yeah <clears throat> yeah it's just but usually... it's a big kitchen and it's an utter redo like total diy redo of like a 300 square foot space mm-hmm. so yeah yeah. And you're doing it yourselves. I mean, yeah, that's like in the middle of life, like when there are pockets mm-hmm. of time, it's not like we're just plugging away on it eight hours a day. No, mm-hmm. it's in between, you know, we have two teenagers that don't drive. And so it's in between like driving to work, picking mm-hmm. up from work, running mm-hmm. to the post office, da, 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 you know, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so this isn't your current, like, state of things but (laughs) let's let's talk to our homemakers about just that that summer flavor of things because yeah there is so much enjoyment to have in each season and I mean it's 103 degrees here today it's summer it's hot and 
it'll be like this for the next 90 days. I mean, ish, give or take. And so it's easy when you get in these extremes to just kind of like, oh, I want to get away from that. You know, just like Mm -hmm. winter's okay. And then there's a snowstorm and you have three feet. Oh, summer is okay. And then it's 106 degrees, right? Right. You hit this point where you're like, I would like it to be just 70 and neutral, please. Um, but, But there's also really, really sweet fruit for the homemaker in the summertime, even though it is a bit more chaotic. It's a little bit more dirty. There's a lot more moving pieces. You know, there's goggles and beach towels and weekend trips away and tomatoes. Goggles. Yeah. So many goggles. Earwigs. There's earwigs. There's earwigs and and there's weeds. More earwigs. And broken Mm -hmm. air conditioners. And, you know, it's just, it's a time that is super full. And so for the homemaker, like that summer flavor, I think it's actually important. It's, dare I say, it's a bit like labor where it's like, the harder you fight it, the worse it is. You right. Know? You have to surrender to it. When you're in you labor, have you have to sur- surrender to the pain. It hurts worse when you fight it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think so. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. What is so what is surrendering to summer? Surrendering mm-hmm. to summer. I surrendering to summer. Maybe that's our theme. Um, okay. <laughs> so what that looks like for me is you're gonna have water bottles in the car. You're gonna have towels hanging on the fence line you're going to Mm -hmm. have lots of snack foods available because people are just snacky they eat a lot less at meal times um people like don't okay so it's not just me because i went grocery shopping the other day and i was you know having a little pep talk i'm like i think it's gonna come down to snacks for this one girl yeah i think we're gonna go more mediterranean really light fare because it's too hot and sticky Mm -hmm. and snacks snacks and more snacks yeah Mm -hmm. yeah or like you know i've been cooking up chicken and just having cold chicken in the fridge so people can grab a chunk Mm -hmm. of something that's substantial but then yeah you just pair it with some sliced tomato and a piece of fruit and you're fine and right that so my point is like if but if i want everybody to sit down and have this really nice meal like we have in the winter times with a dessert and the thing and the that's a lot harder to pull off in the summertime because it is. the landscape just looks different. And so I mm-hmm. guess, yeah, what is that surrendering to summer? Like that beautiful piece of things that we get to do this season. And I keep looking out at the landscape and thinking, what will I miss in February? That's where mm-hmm. I need to be. Yesterday we went to the lake and I swam, right? Like you get in and you go because that's something mm-hmm. you can't do in February. So it's frozen. Right. Um, <laughs> eating yeah. fresh, fresh veg. So I was making scrambled eggs this morning with bacon. And then I was like, B, get outside, get an onion, get some kale, get a zucchini, right. collect some tomatoes, stop by the herb garden. Cause you can't do mm-hmm. that in February. Like this is a gift for you now. So don't just take the easy road and, and mm-hmm. soak it in. Like really soak it in. Yeah, I think it's easy to let like good times and like a summertime flare, like just sort of, sort of slip through the cracks. And it's usually because you're like holding on to the way you think things should be or whatever so tightly and it, you're mm-hmm. you're missing it. And like you're you said, it. whether it's just frustration over soggy towels in the backseat of a vehicle, stinking it up or what, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It's it's so different. I I love the vibe. It's sort of uh, it's more like bohemian. I like the summer vibe. Mm-hmm. Kids are sleeping in. I'm mm-hmm. letting them stay up. You know, everybody's bedtime got adjusted to be later. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also have to remember then the sort of rigidity of the school year is is different. Um, mm-hmm. It is easy to let it's easy to let go too much too. I mean, it's easy. Like the other day we were going to go to the beach and I, I know what happens when we get home. I get frustrated. I walk in, things are untidy. It's not ready to make dinner. So I just sat down on my computer, flunked out lists, printed them, handed them out. I'm like, I'm going to go do some work and here's your list and come let me know when it's done. And then we'll go to the beach. Yep. You know? Yeah. 
Well, there's still a structure to things. We still need a structure, at least in our home. We need to still need a structure to things for sure. But, um, and, but there's so much to like, this might sound bad, but there's so much to bribe your children with in the summertime. So much leverage. (laughs) Like you want to go to the water slides on Friday? Right. Yeah. Here you go. Time to clean out your closet, bud. You the splash, splash, splash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, so much leverage. I love it. It's true. It's super yeah. true. In February, you're like, what do you? I won't let you practice your piano. I'm like, what is there to do? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. you know by the end of August, you guys, you're going to know because you're going to be listening to the podcast, and I'm going to be like, I need some structure. I'm just going to mm-hmm. be so ready for those sharpened pencils and fresh binders and sweatshirts and menus. But, um, but I guess as you get older, you do realize how short things are and you're, and how you're able to endure them because you know, they just, they just vaporize. (laughs) They have such a vaporous quality to them. (laughs) If you think about how fast summer goes, like I'm, I've got a Paris tour coming up in October and someone just told me today, I was talking to one of my customers. She's like, it's 90 days from now. I'm like, oh, please don't mm-hmm. say that. I love summer so much. I want to go to Paris so bad with you guys. I don't want summer to be over. Mm-hmm. And you do, you start looking at it like, how many more summers do I have, Shay? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. how many more times do I get to garden in the summer? God willing, 40, mm-hmm. 30, 25, like who knows? And so when you start looking at that, like how quickly time goes by, It really helps you. Okay. How do I want to look at this season? How do I want to make it special, as special as it can be for people I love and for myself? I matter Mm -hmm. too. How do Mm -hmm. I want to keep it organized so I'm not ripping my hair out? How can we make the very best memories? And obviously not just summer, but each season of life, you can come to it with fresh goggles and go and acknowledge that it does really, really matter. Summer really, really matters. It's Mm -hmm. it's special. The seasons are really, really special and they're designed to give us a break from our routine. How boring would it be if we were just in the same pace of life all the time? Mm -hmm. And so I think to look at it like as a gift, how am I going to take care of this gift? Like how how well can I take care of this gift? These three months, these 90 Mm -hmm. days or whatever Mm -hmm. is important. And like, yeah, selfishly, like how much can I draw from them? What what can I fill right. my days with that enrich that day? So I don't know about you, but in the summer, I'm up earlier. I push myself so really early in the summer because I want to squeeze everything I can out of it. It's not just for the kids. It's for me, too. I'm up early to work out. I'm up early to take my paddleboard on the water because, like, I try to get as much, like, selfish things I want to experience in before mom duty kicks in. And it it's taxing, but it's so worth it. It's just, it's so worth it to to push to get everything I can out of this season. It's my favorite season. July is my favorite month. Like this is primo time for me right now, even mm-hmm. with the stupid rain. So <laughs> with the stupid rain. Stupid rain. It's, um, like, it's gross. Like our ground is spongy, Shay. It's it's awful. It's just so sad. But all right. Well, speaking of summer and speaking of gifts. Let's say thank you to Homemaker Chic sponsor, Tubes & Co. Ooh. Now, listen here. They've got a few things that you're going to need for your sweet summertime, okay? And um, site-wide, July 15th, so that's just a few days from now, through the 18th, yeah. you can get 20% off. 20% off. That's a massive discount um, using the code SUMMER20. So... But that's great. That's a big, that's a big discount. So thank you, Emily, for that. So that's uh, July 15th through, through 18th. Um, but you can also just use our code anytime as well. You can use Homemaker Chic for, um, is that right? Homemaker Chic for 15% off anytime. So if you don't want to save the 5%, you don't want to worry about it. 10% off, HMC 10 for 10% off. Sorry. Everyone got that straight now. Okay. You can use that anytime. (laughs) 
But if you want to save that extra 10%, you can shop from July 15th through July 18th using the code SUMMER20. And here's what they have that you need for summer. They have deodorant. The only deodorant. Hello. That works <laughs> for me. Keeps you from stanking. <laughs> That's okay? saying a lot, everyone. <laughs> That's saying a lot. Uh, do you wear an anti anti pers You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, I can't. Anti that has aluminum, right? That's no, what I'm saying. I just use tubes. Yeah. No, no, no. I haven't actually in. It's always like a hunt to find the best deodorant because I haven't used anything with aluminum aluminum since like in the 25 years. So yeah. I was really, really pleased when I discovered tubes that it actually works. It really and a couple different works. Things, you know, lavender and natural. They have different scents to choose from. And it's yeah. a big deal because I'm a spicy meatball. So <laughs> it's a spicy meatball. But not only that, they have sun balm which I use as well. It comes in this beautiful little glass jar. You can put a little on your face. They have the sun stick, which makes it applying even easier. So you can get your deodorant that's baking soda free, good for your skin, no harmful chemicals, nothing that's going to clog your pores, keep your pits smelling fresh. And you can use the sun balm <laughs> and the sun sun stick, which is based um, off of zinc oxide, which is great because it doesn't yeah. soak through your skin. It doesn't get into your bloodstream. It just sits right on the surface of your skin if you need a little extra sun support. So you can visit toopsandco.com. Their link is going to be right below this episode. You can use the code SUMMER20 during that three-day window for 20% off or use the code HMC10 for 10% off at any time. That's great. Okay, so speaking of gifts, um, if you're familiar to the, with the show, you know American Blossom Linens has been a longtime sponsor of the show. And I'm really excited because the owner and I, Janet, spoke over the break and they have decided to treat customers to a fresh mm. linen candle. So I have this burning on my desk. If you're watching on the video, you can smell it. And this is... You said if you're watching on the video, like a, you can smell it. That's what you said. Did I really? <laughs> okay, well, of course, if you're watching on the video, you can smell it. Hello. <laughs> duh. Uh, it smells like a laundry room. Like it's that. fresh linen, but it has like that smell that you want a laundry room to have. So I love it because uh, my laundry room is right around the corner it's sitting on my desk. Here's the thing. Uh, it's summer. You might need to give your linen closet a makeover. And I think you should do that with American Blossom Linens. You can use their code SUMMERCHIC20 for 20% off. Very, very exciting. These linens are completely made in the United States from the weaving, the sewing. And when you're doing that makeover, uh, we would like to share with you that they have a new children's blanket and a crib sheet. And they've restocked the herringbone cotton blankets. Now, this blanket in particular is what is on all my children's bed. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's sort of heavy, so it's really mm -hmm. comforting, but it's not hot. And I have it on I'm my loving bed. American Blossom. I love, I love the I love yeah. the herringbone blankets. I have the blue one. Love mm -hmm. them. Um, the thing about the cotton sheets is, you know, they're breathable. So you're not going to be sweating in the middle of the night. They're very, very mm -hmm. comfortable. They've been making these sheets for, um, this company's been in business for 125 years uh, doing hotel linens, and this is their domestic line. American Blossom Linens is the domestic side of it all. So I know you're going to be happy. They have a two-year happiness guarantee. So visit AmericanBlossomLinens.com, use the code SUMMERCHIC20, get your free candle, or if you're following over on Instagram, hit that red button that says sheets. There you go. There you I go. love our sponsors so much. I feel so grateful for too. each of them. Well, they've been with us for so long. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it so. is a big deal. It is a big deal. It's crazy how noisy it's gotten out there, Ange. There's a lot of everything. And so I just, with the noise, I don't know how you respond to it, but well, I get a, I can get overwhelmed if I think about it too much, but it does make me sort of want to tuck in and just be loyal to what I'm loyal to. You know, I'm old enough now. Darn it. I can be stubborn. I can like what I like and mm -hmm. do what I want to do. And it does. These are my companies. These are my people. This is what I use. And if you're going to convince me otherwise, it's going to take a lot. Like at this point, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like a ludite about it. Like I'm, I want to be open to trying new things, but there's so much out there. Mm -hmm. It is, I, I do get really like attached to certain products and companies mm -hmm. and ideas and mm -hmm. yeah. And I get really attached to people who 
have sort of put the work in for me so that I don't have to think about it as much. Like I'm literally um, almost like paying them to help me solve a problem. Okay. So for example, <laughs> we always use this example in our home, the white t-shirt on Amazon. You go to Amazon, you, you need some white t-shirts. Okay. You have now, okay, you're now okay. going to spend four and a half uh, months of your life searching and then you're going to get, okay, in mm -hmm. reviews and okay, prime shipping and okay, okay, this one. But what about this review? But uh, here's a picture about what this one looks like. I mean, literally you're, you're giving them your time. You're giving them a yeah. piece of your life to sort that out. And there's what? 32,000 pages of options. And at some point mm -hmm. that actually ceases to be helpful. Like there's this tipping point where you're like, okay, you know, oh, you have online shopping is no longer helpful, right? It's not helpful. It's not helpful. Right. Like I'll yeah. go into my local gift stores here or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Here's three things to choose from. Fabulous. I choose this one. Like they've given right. me the, that gift of, of time, of having mm -hmm. to feeling like you're having to problem solve all this in your own head. Right. And maybe I just am a chronic overthinker. Maybe other people don't have that same problem. Like I don't have a problem executing. I know what I like. I know what I want. I, it's just, there's a lot to filter through. Mm -hmm. it, it gets, it gets very, very noisy. I mean, even like if you, if you go onto YouTube, let's say, and you search laundry routines, homemaking tips, mm -hmm. whatever menu planning. I mean, any of these topics mm -hmm. that we like to talk about here on the show, right. Um, right. you could watch content from now until you die. Literally <laughs> there's enough content it's for true. you to like absorb and follow and, and engage with until your death. <laughs> and yet, and like, on that downer, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like I, I, that doesn't, that's not helpful. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how much noise out there. It's not helpful unless there's somebody that I've connected with that can kind of speak into things in a specific way. Or if I just say, here's a, maybe a better example. I don't listen to okay. all the history podcasts. I listen to the rest is history. Now there's so. going to be other history podcasts out there that are probably really great. And they might even cover topics that the rest is history isn't going to cover. Mm -hmm. But I like, I got my people. I'm good. I'm satiated. Mm -hmm. And that's a really nice feeling to feel like, I know where I get my makeup. I know where I get my sheets. I know where I listen to my history podcast. I know where I go when I need a little homemaking inspiration. Right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's all these pieces of our life. And that's a nice place to get to where you can just kind of, yeah. the noise sort of calms down a little bit. Things get a little uh, bit I think, quieter. Yeah. And I think it's nice to be in a community of people that you trust to learn about new things. So sort of in that same way, they've done the research for you. It's gone through their filter. And now you get to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's I think a lot of people listen to the show for that reason. I mean, people ask us all the time about X, Y, Z. And I mean, I, I do that with people that I trust. Oh, you said it. OK, well, I know like it's gone through the gauntlet in mm -hmm. your mind or what you approve of or what you allow into your home. And so I'll listen mm -hmm. to tell. Yeah. Oh, we do that all the time. We do that all the time without even realizing it because we build relationships with people that we trust then uh -huh. because we can't be an expert on everything. Right. You know? Right. So oftentimes, for example, before like voting before November, I call like three different people. And I'm just like, all right, what is this proposition again? Help me understand. Like, I'm mm. an idiot because I'm like not at it for me. Well, local stuff is, yeah, it's tough. local stuff. Yeah. With all these different levies and this and that. And you're like, okay, now mm -hmm. help me understand because I trust their judgment on certain things right. and they help me to understand and they help to explain it to me in a way that I can make a decision about it because I can't be an expert on national policies and local policies and state policies while at the same time being an expert on homemaking or farming right. or homeschooling or cooking or take your pick, any number of things. Like, <laughs> I need your help. And so it's, I don't know, it's kind of this 
I think it's this really beautiful stage of life where without even realizing that you do this necessarily, you do end up surrounding yourself with a network of people Mm -hmm. that you trust, that you value, that you can kind of rely on, that you know who to go to for what, you know, like, do Mm -hmm. you have, I have like a cow lady, Molly. Hi, Molly. (laughs) Yeah. If I got a cow question, that's who I go oh, yeah. to. Oh yeah. I've, yeah. If I list the people I know, then, you know, aside from how much I love them, there's going to be some resource next to them. You know what I mean? And they do that with me, whether it's design or whatever, you know? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. You have those people that, you know, okay, I trust you with this topic and I'm safe to bounce ideas off of you. I'm safe to say, you know what? I don't understand this. Can you break it? Can you speak Ange to me? Can you mm-hmm. break this down in a way that I understand? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's a, a beautiful part of like maturing and, and creating a community. Mm-hmm. Being part of a community is uh, you get, you start to surround yourself with people that, um, that you trust. I mean, that you, trust. you trust. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a really, I think that's a really special piece of it. And it's not necessarily the tangible piece of homemaking. Like you don't get to see it in that way, but, um, but it's there and it's, it's Mm -hmm. like this secret little web that we get to curate in our home. Like, what are the things that you do in your home? What are the things that sometimes you need support doing in your home, you know? Mm -hmm. and who can, who can you sort of build relationship with around that thing? So like have a preserving friend, <laughs> have like right. a, well, like have Christy, an organization you know, buddy. that we had on last season, Christy. you know, she's been my health question guru for yeah. years. Yes. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to share this story of Christy, but I need you guys, we're going to have her back on soon. So fear not. I mean, you guys have locked to Christy. Um, And I think she was really (laughs) taken back by the response that she got. But years ago, Christy and I were, you were there too. We were together in California and Mm -hmm. staying together in an Airbnb, enjoying our time. And I had eaten the salad. Oh my gosh. Are you going to tell this? Yes, of course I am. I had eaten the salad for lunch. Shay's our TMI friend. I am. That's a problem. (laughs) I ate the salad. The whole time I'm eating the salad, I'm like, dang, this is a good salad. Like, why does this taste so good? And I thought, this restaurant's got it going on. Okay. I have such a visual memory of this story. I can see the back patio where we were sitting. Yes. I can see you leaning over the toilet. (laughs) Spoiler! In the darkness. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so... (laughs) As the day progresses, I start to feel like quite funky and my heart is just about to beat out of my chest. So Christy, big nurse, there was actually two nurses there. They take my pulse and I'm like off the charts. I'm like having a heart attack. You're like on an MSG. Yeah. And they said, you're not going to believe this, but like, this is what happens because we went back through the day. Okay. What happened? What happened? What happened? And they were like, this Mm -hmm. is MSG poisoning. And Some people are more sensitive to it than other people. I apparently am quite sensitive to it. And they said it's really common in salad dressings. And I'm like, dang, that's why that salad tasted so good. Anyway, Mm. as the night progresses, they're monitoring me and I just start barfing. I mean, just. And if you know me, next to death, barfing is about as bad as it gets for me. I know it doesn't bother some people. Like, it really bothers me. And so over the years, I've developed this system. When I have to barf, I stick on, <laughs> I stick my thumbs in my ear and then I cover my eyes with the other fingers so that I can't see it or hear it. Or hear it. Okay. Super effective. By, and then you flush before you ever open your eyes. Just don't look. Okay. Oh, of course. So I'm plugged. (laughs) My ears are plugged. Oh my my um, gosh. And by the way, before Mm -hmm. this, Christy had spent like 30 minutes rubbing my back, trying to get me to calm down. Okay. I'm barfing in the toilet and I just feel this hand on my back. She's just rubbing my back. She's flushing the toilet, rubbing my back. It's all right. It's all right. You're doing great. You're doing it. Look, it gives me goosebumps now. I mean, it was like 
the most selfless, oh my gosh. comforting. Yeah, I, was, I was away from home. Mm. Like this was my worst fear being away from home and being sick. And it was like the most, it was one of genuinely the most comforting moments of my life. It was just the sweetest thing. And I like, I feel so grateful to have people like that people that you can trust mm -hmm. that you can say, look, this, there's this relation, there's a special thing here, you know, there's a special thing here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we have that with our, our families, right. With our significant others, like that is your, that is your web of support as a homemaker, the people in your corner. How did we go from capturing summer magic? I'm to sorry. I don't know. You know how it goes. <laughs> Or like savor the season, get up early, enjoy your it's, it's special. Plug your ears when you barf. <laughs> Here's my pro tip: thumbs and ears. <laughs> Don't say we never helped you. I guarantee the next time one of you barfs, you're going to be like, "I know what to do now." Shay said, "She's my trusted community." <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Hopefully no one hopefully there will be no barfing for anybody this summer. I'm sorry. Um no. Because we were talking about the nets of support. That's how we got on the topic. I know. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. <laughs> but for reals, saber summer. Saber summer. Don't don't rush it. My kids today. Oh, it's hot. I'm almost like, stop it. Right. Stop. Yes, it's hot. How do you think our tomatoes turn red? Okay. Right. Oh, Come on. In the sprinkler. Right. That's what I said. Go play in the sprinkler. My mom used to lock the door. Okay. <laughs> Have a nice day. Clink. <laughs> About 12 30, she'd throw a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a juice box right? out. Exactly. There you go. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We used to go ride our bikes through the sprinklers in the neighborhood. You know, just like good stuff. Oh, yeah. There's good stuff. Okay, here's something. Okay. Let me talk to you about okay. this. We're, what we can do whatever we want. It's our show. Yeah, the cold sure. plunge, the cold plunge thing. Okay, yeah. Thinking about people jumping in cold water. <clears throat> I was talking to my friend okay. Jody about this yesterday. She has a hard time like getting her body woken up. Like she's um, feels a little sluggish, and so okay. when she jumps in cold water, she gets this. Whew, all right. Let's go. Yeah, it's a parasympathetic nervous system thing. Like it stimulates the vagus nerve. It and, stimulates yeah. all the good things. And but people are almost like prescribing this universally. Okay. So when I was actually speaking with somebody regarding this, because I I operate like up here all the time. I am what do you uh, mean? and I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working on it, but it's like, I have to <laughs> really genuinely fight being in fight or flight mode over basic things. Okay. So, so I've got problems the other way. So sometimes people are down here. They need to be brought up. Sometimes people are up here and they need to be brought down. And so mm -hmm. I don't need to like, I'm roaring to go. I I'm feeling mm -hmm. it. Okay. And so they were saying that actually people like you should never do cold plunge because you're already here it will like jack you to be elevated to this point because i've learned over the years without understanding any of the science behind it that mm. warm water like when i come home from a stressful situation or a difficult conversation or something that just really overstimulates me i take a bath mm. or i take a warm shower and it's literally me telling my body like you're safe you're okay like you need to come down and it's like to, to okay. bring everything. So have you ever heard that theory of like, that it's not for everybody? Um, I think I heard it from you. Oh, did think, we talk about this I think before? you said something. I think we've talked about it briefly on the show before. Um, okay. Just when it, because it was, we talked about like the trendiness of cold plunging, like people not like doing it mindfully you know people like silly um, doing it just for views or whatever okay but i don't wonder and i could just be talking on my butt i don't i don't wonder if i mean i i run really hot too like intense lots of cortisol okay like it's a thing it's a problem but but 
when I was so like two years ago, and I've just kind of been I've been really contemplating my health this summer because um, I just get these surges where I just work really hard at it. And it's not that I'm unhealthy and just like throwing caution to the wind, but it, there's chapters in my life where I get really interested in it. Like right now, I'm super interested in the brain and whatever. So two summers ago, I was at that base. I had COVID really bad and then really spent the summer like repairing from that. And I spent that summer doing my sauna every night and then cold plunging. And I found that it really helped me. And I don't know if it was, mm. again, I could be so, so scientifically incorrect here, but I don't know if it was the, the intensity of the cold plunge going, no, this is stress. Ah. What you're experiencing during the day is not actual stress. I found like I was chill. It was kind of like I say to my kids, if everything up is epic, nothing is epic. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I I found like it had the opposite. It was a real regulator for me. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. If anyone knows anything about this, will you message us on Instagram? Because <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about. But I mean, have you ever Christy done it? Does. Like, have you ever done it? Religiously, have you ever made it mm -mm. a part of your health routine? No. Okay. Um, I actually found that the endorphin rush was so high, like I my body began to crave it. Mm. Uh, what happened was, if I would wash my face in the evenings or something, my skin, my hands would feel the cold water, and literally, I would have this. I it felt like my body was going, "Oh, we're doing it! Oh, we're going to do it!" You know, like <laughs> cold water was like a trigger. Of like, oh, happy things are coming, you know, like oh, when you smell coffee. Yeah. 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 And you're like, oh, good things are coming. It now was that's that a language I speak. That's a language I right? speak. Right, exactly. Yep. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was a physical response. My body physically anticipated the happy hormone release. And I felt oh. really good doing it. And I, I actually like I'm kind of printing out my summer Cause I'm working out really hard lifting, lifting and everything. And so I was like, okay, you know what you're missing? You're not, you're not doing sauna and cold plunge like you were. Why don't you fold that back in and see how you like mm. it? So there you go. Okay. Noted. My two, my two cents. I'm actually <laughs> doing the same thing. I'm working on my list right now of like these things that I want to fill my day with. So like you have been getting up really early, getting my coffee, going outside, putting my feet on the ground for like five or 10 minutes looking up at the sun at I all love it i can't stand being barefoot it grosses me out Keeps what babies i don't want to feel pea gravel grass makes me like oh i cannot walk around in grass Are you no kidding way me? ever since i was a kid i don't want to feel grass on my feet it's gross it's not I gross to, it's soft I walk and squishy on gravel mm -mm. no it's what cute. Yeah, I know. That's I'm not. All right. I well, just can't do it. I like it. I Even like in it. Even in gravel, like if I'm grounding or whatever, I'm like, oh gosh, this is this over with? Can I go put my tennis shoes on? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> you must have really soft feet. Oh, my feet are, they're actually really nice. They're <laughs> not scaly and tough. And they're actually, just so you know, they're really nice feet. <laughs> My children barely <laughs> wear shoes at all. We joke they have hobbit feet. Like they don't, mm -hmm. they're just leather soles. You know, my kid will have like goat heads sticking out his soul. He doesn't even know he's been poked because his, his feet are so thick. He's like, oh, did I rip a toenail off? Oh, huh. didn't even notice. Yep. I know. Isn't that amazing how kids do that? You come in at the end of the day, you realize you're bleeding, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, But been like same thing just like and then I'm gonna read I'm gonna do my my bible reading I'm going to make sure that I go out into the garden for xyz and just like it's unscheduled but it's intentional it's like mm -hmm. we're gonna get through our day and we're going to have experienced these things right. and that like then you get to the end and even if the house is a little crusty and even if you quite didn't didn't quite get the things off the list that you wanted to, it feels right. it feels full and you feel satisfied feels at the end of it. Experienced. Yeah. 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 And it feels good. So I mean, apart from the vomiting story, hopefully, um 
<laughs> we've touched on a few ways that we can savor that summer. And I guess maybe unintentionally that that's kind of what we're going to be doing this season is talking about that. We have some really great guests lined up for this season, which we're really excited about. And we were really just thank you for receiving our guests so kindly last season. That was yeah, a blessing did. to them. Those were great shows. If you haven't heard them, get caught up and we're going to have them back because it was yeah. good stuff. Yeah, it was. It, it was sweet. really good stuff. Um, share the podcast. Thanks. It helps us so much. Every comment, every like, every heart, every rating, every share means the world to us. So thanks for being here with us, ladies. And we're going to spend the next 10 weeks enjoying the summer together. Wow. I know. Okay. Good stuff. All right. See you next Monday. Cheers. Cheers.